Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I am Harshit Tatalia. Um, I head engineering for analytics and data science at Juniper. Um, so just continuing on what Harry presented, right? we will show all the telemetry capabilities. And today, in particular, I want to highlight all the flow-based analytics that we are doing. Right? So we'll go into the depths of how we are collecting all of that information, and at the same time, making sure that we can analyze it and, and present it in a way that is useful for our customers. So um, let me take a step back and, and talk about the evolution of, of how we've progressed in, in day two operations, right? So we initially started with CLI commands and SNMP, people con constantly polling all of that information. And, and soon people realize that it's not worth it, right? If you get the information, but it's either too late or not really useful at that point when you actually get that information. So we moved further into like doing SNMP alerts or fault-based analysis as a step two. Going further, it, it became more clear that you needed, you had just too many alerts. The data center was too big and, and you needed some more differentiation in terms of either doing analysis on these those alerts itself, so you had anomaly detection. Then came with Google um, the stream-based approach, right? Going and instead of doing polling on all the individual devices, now there's a capability inbuilt into most devices that Juniper supports today is streaming telemetry out, right? So you could subscribe to, like, let's say, a feed. Um, think about it being like a Twitter feed that you're, you're uh, subscribing to something which is like saying when your fan is going to uh, is 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 going over speed in in one of your devices, right? So so we moved into uh, going into subscribing for information rather than polling for it, and and then as a result of it, we could become more and more proactive now with our approach in in remediation. And finally, now we are at the stage where we are we have all of this in place. We use machine learning to use and interact on that data. And then on top of that, we can now do closed loop automation to kind of fix the gap itself. So you know known problems, you have seen this problem five times, write a playbook, automate it, and have and enjoy your Valentine's Day, right? So. Um, what, what do you mean by fix the problem? What, when you just said that, maybe it was just in passing, you made a, a comment. What, what do, you, do you mean that there is some sort of remediation that the system takes automatically? Yes. <clears throat> Yeah. So, so, so when you say closed loop automation, you're talking about you know collecting the data, doing whatever you do to analyze it, make right. recommendations, and then taking proactive steps within the system itself. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And then um, just to go recap back into how it kind of fits into the Juniper ecosystem, right? So we have all our gear which provides the switching and routing. Uh, we have the firewall capabilities which go ahead and, and secure all of those. And then we have the telemetry analytics which help you see that information as well, right? And, and the control is, is what Harry presented in which you can provision all of these to be in a single pane of uh, view as well. So um, pretty much if you look at any standard deployment today, it, you have the underlay which is either could be Juniper uh, boxes or some other vendors' boxes, at the same time, you have your OLA as well. And pretty much, it's, it's like the blame game, right? I see everything is fine in my underlay, but I don't know what's happening in the OLA. And the, the app guy is the one who is crying, and he does not know where the real problem is, right? So, so it's like a black box that has gone away somewhere. And so what you really need is a way for you to trace the flow from the app through the underlay and, and make sure that what the OLA is seeing and what the underlay is seeing is, is on the same view of class, right? So, so that's what the genesis is, is of for, for uh, creating the solution. And, and let me walk you through like, the, the initial few capabilities of the solution and, and go uh, ahead with that, right? So let me at this point uh, jump into the live cluster. Make it full screen. Awesome. So um, we automatically discover the topology, right? So when, when Harry showed that you could onboard all the fabric, at the same time, this topology was, was drawn as well, right? So we use the same uh, method to kind of go ahead, build this topology out. 
And not only is this topology uh, like you could edit the way it is over here, it becomes live as well. So it becomes live with the data flowing through it. Right? So now you are no longer just looking at a static configuration, but you're also looking at what are the hotspots in, in your environment. And helps you troubleshoot where, where most of the traffic is flowing, as well as in what direction it is flowing as well. So you could hover uh, in, on any of the links, and it will give you information about, about that as well. At the same time, you could go ahead and, and select any of the parameters, right? So you're not just looking at network parameters, but you could go and look at like memory usage on your host, as well as like look for any of the SNMP metrics or any of the GRPC metrics. Any metric that you feel is useful is all available on the single plane of view, right? So that's what I was talking about, getting all the information on a single pane so that it helps in troubleshooting as well as filtering out what's what is essential for you. The other things that, that we have built um, into this is, is looking it at this view in different modes, right? So, so typically, everybody likes to view it horizontally, or the leaf spine architecture, as we call it. But at times, you may want to view it in a different way so as to make sense of the data, right? So, so you could view this thing vertically, and it also could view this radially. Now, where does radially come into picture is, is, is when you have a very large environment, right? So we have a simulated environment. Let me show you that, where you could uh, look at data, which is <coughs> where there are like thousands and thousands of switches on a single platform, right? So you potentially can visualize all of that also on the same environment. And, and it can help you pinpoint exactly what you're looking for and help you dig deep into, into individual fabrics as well. I'm sure you won't have this many, but this is just a simulation, so it helps you kind of give a sense of the scale at which uh, this whole thing can work. Going further. So the other things that we build are, are like uh, looking at uh, the top end uh, applications or the top end flows in your network, right? So that's the most critical thing, right? You want to know like right now who are the heavy talkers in your environment, right? So we look, we list down everything that's out there for you. And then from each one of those, you could drill down into, let's say, the OLA source, the OLA destination, destination port. You could pretty much pick any field that you think is going to be interesting to you, right? You could pick the protocol or any, any of the phi tuples for the underlay or the phi tuple for the overlay, you could pick and drill down. Once you have this information, you can also see what path this particular flow took. So we know this particular flow exists in the environment today, and it's taken up like around 400 MB of network traffic. I can click on Find Path, and it will tell me exactly the path between the two VMs that it took from, for the underlay, right? So these are the two VMs or the workloads where my app is running. These are the two bare metal servers where, which is hosting those. And then this is the fabric through which this particular flow is passing through, right? So now if you have multiple uh, like paths in, the fa in, in your network, we'll highlight both of them as well. And we'll tell you exactly like what is the distribution. So you can get over here two of them and it will show you what the distribution is as well. Right? So this really helps you pinpoint exactly if any time you get a call, hey, my app is running slow, you know where the problem exists. And you can start digging from there versus going through the entire fabric in, in one shot. So um, let me go back into the top end uh, view. So over here, so the other, other thing that we have built is, is looking at like different dashboards, right? So now if you want to just visualize the data that we are capturing by, by any particular port or any particular IP, you can see where your hotspots are, right? So you can look at what's my top uh, destination IP or what's my top destination port. The other thing is that if you have an inbuilt query that you made with regards to all these parameters, and let's say you added um, a protocol field as well over here, and and this is what you are interested in. So I think it's all UDP. But, but what you could do is you can add this particular query into the dashboard as well with a single click. And it, it will 
show up over here uh, as well. So we will be constantly tracking this for you so that, that this, is, this dashboard is fully customizable according to the things that you are interested in, in looking in, in, at, at your fabric. Can it show the ratio of the north-south to east-west traffic? Yes. Can, can you show us? So what we have um, is so if I switch on over here, it's showing me the utilization of the link. Actually, it's showing like a, in a different way in which, we, for a given part of a link, it will tell you how much percent it is getting utilized. So if you look over here, it's telling you this is. I mean, there's not much traffic running here, but this is the percentage of of the link that is getting utilized. So you know between any two points what is the total amount and how much of that link is getting utilized at any given point in time. No, what I mean is basically I want to get a metric that how much data uh, internally my servers are sending to each other versus how much I'm sending out or receiving from outside. So that would be a good metric basically. I see. To I see. So, uh, so you want a summation of all the exactly. metrics which are connected to my servers exactly. horizontally, yeah. uh, but uh, but typically everything will throw th go through the fabric. So you're basically looking at everything that is going but something out is from going, here. Yeah. Like right. with with ERB, yeah. right, you're going to keep a lot of that traffic local to the leaf. So yeah. understanding what you know what traffic is staying local, right. especially in an environment that's highly virtualized where workloads are going to be yeah. moving back and forth, is right. is very useful. Okay, I think that's good feedback. I yeah, think yeah. definitely we'll. I think you have so, everything. You just yeah. need to. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so we can. I can obviously tell you that uh, today you could build that on your own, yeah. right? Uh, we have the capability where any person can define their own metric into the system, and that can pull up as well. So, if you like, are comfortable in writing a couple of Python scripts, pulling it together and and putting it um, where our agent is running, which is capturing all of these metrics. You could do that totally possible. Uh, it's over here. And that's how we calculate utilization as well. So we look at the SNMP MIP and figure out what's the link capacity for it. And then for each of the parameters, like how much bandwidth that we are looking at, we divide both of them. Right? So there's this, like a custom thing that we are running to get this metric. But, but that is also possible. It's just not built in, okay. into the product today. So let's move along. Um, let me, so I've, I've covered. Um, some of the uh, the main feature sets. Now, let me try to go down from what are the use cases that we are trying to really solve here, right? So, so what's what's <clears throat> just to recap, right? So, what's like really underlay overlay correlation? So, you have your data center, you set up all the workloads, and you have your different tenants. Uh, which, which could be like uh, either projects that Harry described or actual users of your environment, and they have all these different workloads in, in, uh, that are running in, in that environment, right? So now you want to identify a physical path for that particular OLA connection, right? So you, you have a problem where saying, tenant A, between my two workloads, I'm not able to connect to each other, right? So you have these two are the workloads, and you have these multiple paths in your environment. Now, it could, the traffic could have taken this path, or it could have taken this path. How do you know that? Right? So what you do over here is you go into the environment. Uh, you select, essentially, the, the, the virtual network that, that you are interested in. So basically, you'll select the source IP and the destination IP of that particular uh, VM. And then we will show you the path exactly taken through the underlay between those two VMs. Right? So it will help you pinpoint any troubleshooting that you need to do to figure out where the packet drops are happening. And at the same time, we also know the packet drops that are happening on each of the individual devices as well, because you can set up SNMP traps or either just alarms that, that uh, uh, in, built into the product itself. And those can, in addition, help you along with, with this topology view uh, to, to, to narrow down the problem. The other use case that it can really help solving is, is figuring out like, the distribution of OLA networks between two hosts. Right? So now, when you just created the OLA network, how do you know how many elements did it actually touch in your fabric? Or similarly, if you're trying to offboard somebody, how do you know that what is the what is the real impact of that particular user? Right. So, 
So let's say you have your source and destination pair, and you know this is my traffic distribution. You can go into the top end view, and you can select the parameters that are important to you, right? So from all the fields, you can select the destination port and the, uh, and the OLA destination uh, IP. And then you can easily filter the source IPs uh, that, that you are interested in. This helps you narrow down exactly the set of resources that, that would be impacted by this OLA, right? So it really helps you uh, figure out what are the different things that are impacted, as well as what is the distribution of traffic between those things that you are really interested in. And, um, and, and I showed you as well that you can move this to the charts, and it also gives you all the details around each of the elements uh, uh, for it in, in, in those uh, bar charts as well. And then finally, the, the most important one is that, <clears throat> hey, this client is, is, or this tenant has a problem, right? Now, what are all the elements that I need to look at for this particular user or for this particular tenant? So we help in doing that with the help of the filtering capability that we have. So you have, let's say, four tenants, and you want to understand pretty much tenant B, all the ports that he's occupied across all the network elements in your, in your environment, right? So you have a big cluster. You want to identify that for this tenant, the workloads are over here, the physical routers are over there, and these are the VMs or these are the physical hosts on which he's, he's kind of is running his workloads. All of that can be identified with the help of a single click, right? So this earlier, you would take so many CLI commands, so many like other things that you would have to pretty much bring up, you'll even have to bring up Excel. I don't know if anybody still uses it, but, but and all of that can be eliminated just with the help of a single command. So if you look over here, you have such an environment and you're looking for this particular tenant, so you select a time range in which you are looking for. So that's one thing I forgot to mention, everything is based on time as well. So you can actually go ahead and look back into the history for all these operations too, because we are keeping track of things that are moving. So if you want to understand what happened last week, we can do that as well. And one of the upcoming features that we have is we're going to be able to compare those two as well. So you'll be able to compare what's happening last week versus what happened this week side by side on the topology, and you will see the difference for, for, for you to kind of intake. So um, let me kind of restart this. Um, so you select what the time range that you're interested in, and then you basically uh, go ahead and, and look for that particular user through his either the social, uh, the, the source virtual network or, or through the desk virtual network, and then we'll exactly pinpoint all the resources that that, that, that particular uh, user is using, right? So according to us, it's, it's really, really powerful in, in helping you figure out more insights into your fabric. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Um, happy to answer any further questions. So it's a different application the customer has to buy, or it's built in. When no, you... it's it's the same application. It's the same GUI. Let me go back. Um, but is it licensed differently? So if you get <coughs> Contrail, do you have to get a license for the insights portion? So if you buy Contrail, you get insights, like there, there are different tiers, right? So you, this comes in the premium tier, but if you buy Contrail, this comes uh, um, part, of the, part of the solution. But at the same time, you can buy this standalone as well. So if you don't want all the Contrail pieces, you can buy this standalone and just look at uh, flow-based networking, or uh, flow-based visualization rather into, into, uh, into your network. And so it's, it's the same GUI, right? So you have the same, uh, um, Things over here, the the fabric, everything is over here. Like it's it's the same user interface and and the same backend as well. 